It's time for another Meet the Voice Actor interview. And this time, Peter talks to Jeff Simpson, who was a shy youngster before literally finding his voice by losing his inhibitions in creative character work. He now has a professional voice booth at home where his work has snowballed. He keeps learning, as we all should do, and gave himself a challenge to create a new character voice every day. Let's meet him now. My name is Jeff Simpson. I'm a voice actor. I love doing character work. And you would never guess it growing up with me because I was very shy. But once I started acting in school plays, I really came out of my shell. And uh, it was actually when I was the morning announcements guy in my junior year of high school that I started to develop all these characters that I love to perform. And I had a goal at the beginning of the school year. I am going to write a new script or perform a new character every day for the entire school year. And by the end of the year, I'd accomplished that. And uh, I also got a little bored by the end of the year, so I started killing off all of these characters that I had created. And then there was this big trial to see who was the, the killer, and it was great fun. Well, that sounds like my uh, time at school. We had a sort of mock radio station, and uh, yeah, it was really good. Our teacher was really into audio in a big way, and he got me inspired. It sounds like it happened to you oh, as yeah. well. Yeah. So, so w w what was your original character? Can you put on that voice for us now? <laughs> what was his name? You know, I, I like to think that I do an okay New York accent, so I had these two twin brothers Georgie and Tony Pasquino, but they sounded exactly the same. So I, it was kind of a cheat. Two characters for the price of one. Um, I, uh, oh goodness. I did some really obscure ones like musicians that aren't very popular anymore, like Macy Gray. Try to say goodbye and that joke. That, that musician. Um, I, I would do like a, a rated R movie trailer voice, you know, the guy at the end of the trailer that says, Rated R. And then I would have like a softer PG-13 voice, rated PG-13. Um, just, I would make little modifications and create new characters out of them. But uh, wow. yeah, great fun. So when did you first realize that you could monetize your skill there? You know, did you create a, a Fiverr profile or was there another site you went on or did you get an agent? You know, um, I, I, during college, I actually got a gig at, a, at the college radio station and then I transferred to a different college, got a job at that college radio station. And one of the first radio gigs I ever got, or one of the first voiceover gigs I got, was working for a courtesy training company as their voiceover guy. And um, I also was cast as an African-American 13-year-old little boy for an, uh, an ESL program. And yeah, that's where it all started. And I started get taking acting classes, recording demos, and it kind of just snowballed from there. I, I found you on the, uh, the Fiverr website, and uh, let's have a listen to your demo you've got on there now. Um, I'll be right back. Thirdly, if in the likely scenario the robot should turn against its masters and try to harm them, well, we have an evacuation plan in place. Congratulations! You've just won two tickets to Disney World. Oh, that's great, but could you put me back on hold? Oh, I love this song. Oh, no! I just lost my pepperoni. Well, that was incredible. What a variety. They all sound like different people. <laughs> but uh, that's all the skill of the character voice actor, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, I still try to create characters to this day. I, I reached a point in my life probably about a decade ago where I kind of hit a creative funk. You know, I was just going through the motions of life and wanted to get those creative juices flowing again. So once again, I came up with a, a goal to, for one day or every day for an entire year, I was going to create a new character and write a new script just like I did in high school. But this was gonna be different. They weren't just random characters. I, I created this whole backstory and this whole plot where these are characters at a radio station and you know all the wacky comings and goings and happenings that that went on there so i had uh, you know the eccentric cajillionaire is how he coined himself who was the owner of the radio station and i had all the radio personalities you know so the i'd put on the i had kind of a tom brokaw-esque voice you know like 
This is Tom Brokaw, but it was, I called him something else. There was Jay Peterman, who was very much uh, like a character on Seinfeld. So a lot of them were kind of formed after real people or real characters in TV shows and movies. But at the end of the year, I had created a new character every day for an entire year. And actually, every character that you hear on my character demo uh, came from that blog that I had created. And that, wow. that character demo has done very well for me. Yes, I'm sure it has. And interesting that you talk about the importance of backstory. When I first started to do stuff for, for video game companies, they often sent you a picture and tell me all about where they grew up and who their friends are and who they're related to. And I thought, I don't want to know this. But you do, <laughs> don't you? You actually need to get in their head. It's so interesting because it can happen multiple ways. It can happen the way you described it where, you know, you get the specs of the character, you see a picture of them, and that can really inform the way that that character speaks. But then sometimes you get this character idea in your head and you just start talking to yourself and a lot of the dialogue or a lot of what informs that character comes out of these sessions of just talking to yourself. And so I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of talking to oneself in the mirror, in front of other people. I, I workshop a lot of stuff in front of my kids, and I can tell very quickly whether they think it's funny. <laughs> so, Jeff, because you've created so many different voices, isn't there a danger you're going to slip from one into another? How do you concrete yourself? How do you, how do you nail yourself into the character and stay in that character? You know, it's interesting. Just to give you an example, if I were doing an audiobook, for instance... Um, there are times when, you know, cause an audio book can be a quite a long process and there's many different characters and some of them might even sound a little bit alike. And so what I'll do is I'll make a file of each of those characters so that, you know, 30 pages later when this character I haven't voiced in a while comes up, oh gosh, how exactly did he sound? And you know, what mannerisms did he had or did he have? I would, I'll go back and I'll listen to that just to make sure that, you know, I can stay consistent with those character voices. Absolutely. Are, are there any that hurt your voice more than others? Because I know that some of them, you have to really use your throat in a bad way just to get the sound out. There's one, uh, I, I've done a series of, of audio books um, where the, the villain is, you know, he's, you've probably heard villains like him before, but but he has this very stereotypical villain voice, right? And so it's very raspy and very taxing on my voice. There are some characters that will have deeper voices that, you know, maybe later in the day I just can't do as well. And so those characters, I'll record them first thing when, you know, we all sound like frogs <laughs> early in the morning. <laughs> do you ever get to see any uh, finished of the video games or animations that uh, clients send you and you think, gosh, is that really my voice? Because you, you sort of look at the image first, don't you? And, and the voice has to go with it, but it doesn't sound like it comes from you. Uh, when I listen back to my voice on a track, it, it doesn't sound, I mean, it sounds, oh, that sounds how I think I sound. And yet when you get on the telephone, you know, or when you listen to your, yourself in a voice, voice answering machine, sometimes it's like, oh, is that how I sound? But um, <laughs> yes, in answer to your question, yes. Um, and I've actually, I was surprised because over the period of a couple of years, I recorded a season of of a kids, an animated kids show called The Insectables. And it was interesting because we had people uh, that were directing me in Singapore and all these different countries. And so I never met any of the other cast or the, or the crew. And, you know, years went by and I just happened to be scrolling through on Facebook one day. And I know that they had been shopping this, this cartoon around to different countries and different television stations. But I came across a posting of another cast member that said, I'm so excited that The Insectables is now on Amazon Prime. And so sure enough, I zipped right over to Amazon Prime and season one of The Insectables was right there. All 52 episodes. So I never thought I would see the finished product of any of those. And now I've got them forever at my fingertips. So I'm super excited oh, about that. Fantastic. I hope you got paid well for it. <laughs> Quite often <laughs> you, know, you don't, do you? It's funny you said that because when I was, when I was voicing it, you, you see a little bit of you know, crude animation and sketches. And so mm. you, you voice according to those when they try to give you a character reference. But mm. uh, when I did see the finished product, I thought, 
gee, I should have asked for more money because <laughs> it, it turned yeah, out quite it, good. Yeah. Well, it helps to climb the ladder. I mean, it, there are some people who say, you know, I've, I will not rest until I get my Sony PlayStation game and work for a top Californian company. Uh, or, or are you like me? I'm quite happy to do a variety of different work. And if I get it, fine. But if not, don't worry. Yeah. Well, you probably run into the same thing that I do quite frequently where you tell somebody that you do voiceovers and they kind of look at you strange, like they have no idea what you're talking about, right? So you kind of have to explain, well, I, I, you know, I'm the voice of that you can hear on audiobooks and commercials and, you know, the, the sexual harassment videos that the HR department makes everybody watch. But uh, what I, I really boil it down to, basically, I voiced everything except a toy. I haven't haven't voiced a toy, but everything else. Not that I'm aspiring to that. Like I'll I'll voice a toy and I'll I'll say I finally made it. I voiced a toy. I I love as you said doing a variety of different things because it it keeps me on my toes and it helps me keep my skills sharp and it just mixes things up. I I love going to a job where every day is a little different. Yeah, Jeff, it's been great uh, speaking to you, and thanks for your uh, it, 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 uh, talk about your your job. What would you say to a, a newcomer to our industry? How would they get started in creating character showreels and getting some work? Right. I think the number one thing I tell people what they don't necessarily realize is that voice acting is just that. It is acting. So you really do need to take acting classes you need to uh, get a coach that knows what he or she is talking about and can guide you to find the basically your delivery style, your your mannerisms, your voice, if you will. And uh, if you're doing character voices, you cannot be afraid to talk to yourself. You cannot be afraid of looking like a fool. So just let it all out there. And uh, good things will happen, and you will realize that you're more creative than you thought.